Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. In the previous lectures you have learnt about how data is generated from various omic technologies. The amount of data is very huge and it is very challenging to make meaningful insights from the big data sets. To understand the mechanisms at multiple levels data visualization tools make the job easier. For example, a tool can help a researcher find the correlation between a gene with its mRNA or protein or even microRNA. In today's lecture we will take a look at linked omics which is an online tool that helps in visualization and correlation of multi omics data set. So, let us welcome Dr. Bing Jiang for his today's lecture. So first I will um, just give you a brief introduction to the motivation and the basic functions in uh, linked omics, um, what we can do there. Um, so uh, this is a tool basically try to bring the data and the tool together. Um, like WebGestalt, I mean it's just a tool, right? You have to uh, provide your own, uh, your own data or results in order to do analysis. But here, um, I think the motivation for this project is that in um, recent studies like the TCGA and CPTEC has produced a huge amount of data. And for us, especially and for some of you who are work uh, in the cancer area, and this provide a very important resource for us to explore. Um, but for ordinary biologists who do not know how to program, it is not easy to get access to the data and also do the analysis. What we want to do here is to uh, try to develop tools centered around this data resource and then allow everyone to access and use the data. So, um, then uh, the question is, I, of course, with so, uh, the huge amount of data you can do a lot of things, right? Uh, but we are asking what are the most uh, typical questions uh, like biologists will want to ask about this data set. Um, of course, one question a lot of people are interested in is about survival. Uh, let's say if you uh, um, have survival data and then you of course want to ask uh, maybe uh, which MRA are associated with survival. And also maybe you also want to do the analysis at the copy number level to see uh, any copy number change associated with survival. Or you can also do this at the protein level to see which protein change associated with survival. So you can do this analysis separately, but sometimes you also want to compare the results. Maybe you want to prioritize some biomarkers and then you want to see do I see any genes that are commonly associated with survival at different uh, omics level, like meaning copy number change, RNA and the protein all associated with survival, right? Of course, you might be able to identify some unique sense, like a gene whose protein is associated with survival, but the uh, MR and the protein are not. And uh, not only survival, and if you are interested in the uh, biology, let's say if, uh, even if you are not interested in the cancer, but you are interested in a particular microRNA, let's say microRNA 200C, and then you want to see what are the target genes of microRNA 200C, right? We know uh, microRNA might inhibit gene expression through uh, MR decay or inhibit translation, right? Then we can correlate the microRNA expression with uh, mRNA or with protein and this can give, give us the uh, proteins or MRIs that are negatively correlated with microRNA and those could be the uh, potential candidate for the targets of the microRNA. Um, and then you might be interested in a mutation, let's say PIK3CA mutation and then you may want to see what is the uh, uh, transcriptomic or proteomic consequence of the mutation, right? Uh, Let's say we have uh, uh, this mutation, maybe we want to ask uh, in the proteome or even in the phosphoproteome which changes are associated with this uh, um, mutation. And uh, 
of course for all these analysis we end up with uh, a list of genes or um, some statistical analysis results and uh, then we also need to convert this to pathway and the network and the network understanding and then we need to do some pathway like enrichment analysis this type of thing to better understand the results. So together I mean, we want to build a tool that can help uh, users to use this data to discover, compare and uh, interpret omics associations. So you can start with any of these omics platforms or uh, from the phenotype and then you can get, uh, con get connected to any other platforms. That's a goal. And then you can also compare your results across cancer types or across platforms. So in order to do that, we developed the three um, modules in the uh, system to do this. First is called the link finder. So basically from any of the attributes you are interested in, like we said, it could be survival or micron A expression or any gene expression or protein expression or mutation. Um, and depending on the, uh, and then you uh, want to compare it with the other um, space, meaning um, for example, mutation against uh, uh, phosphorylate, uh, phosphorylation uh, or phosphoproteome or microRNA against the proteome or the transcriptome, right? And then depending on the uh, data type in your query attribute um, and also in your uh, target uh, space, search space, and you have to choose a um, right statistical test in order to do the analysis. I think Dr. Manning already um, talked about many of these tests and uh, for what type of data you should use, which type of uh, statistical test. Uh, but this provides a basic summary, like if you have uh, binary as a query uh, data set and then uh, your search space is continuous, then you use a t-test uh, or where Caucasian test, one of them is parametric and the other is non-parametric. If uh, both query and the target are binary, then you use Fisher's exact test. So, but uh, if you interested in survival as query and for continuous data, you use Cox model to do the analysis. Um, but all these tests have already been implemented in uh, linked omics, so uh, you can just pick the right, uh, and all the system actually can help you to recommend the right test for you to do the analysis. And after you do the t uh, result, uh, to do the analysis, you can get your overall result as a uh, volcano plot. Here you have the effect size or the, for example, uh, the T statistic on the X axis and the minus log P values on the Y axis, the volcano plot show you the results. And then for individual genes, you have the differential results or correlation results or survival results showing as different types of plots. And then uh, for link compare, basically um, it can uh, give you some uh, visualization to compare the results from multi-omic studies or from the pan cancer studies. Uh, for example, if you have um, mRNA uh, or the tra whole transcriptome correlated mm -hmm. to microRNA 200C and also the proteome also correlated to the 200C, you can have a scatter plot to compare the result. Or you can have, after you have some significant genes, you can use Venn diagram to compare. Or you can, you, if you have, let's say, survival results for uh, um, um, many cancer types, and then you can use a meta analysis to compare the results. And the link interpret part is easy I mean, to understand now because basically we are using the WebGuest thought to do the link, uh, link interpreter. So uh, this is an overview of the system. Uh, it has the data from TCGA and CPTEC and then it used link finder to identify um, starting from one query attribute, could be survival or micron expression or mutation or anything you are interested in and then you define a search space uh, and then you get some results here and the results can be realized 
and then uh, you can compare results across different platforms or across different cancer types using this visualization or meta analysis. Uh, and then the results from these two can be uh, used as input to link interpreter to generate the pathway level um, results. We are going to um, use the ovarian cancer survival uh, related genes as an example. So the idea is that um, ovarian cancer has been studied by both TCGA and the CPTAG, right? And then from C, uh, TCGA, we have copy number data, we have um, uh, RNA-seq data, and from CPTAG, we have proteomics data. And then we want to ask this question, which genes are uh, correlated with poor prognosis in ovarian cancer I mean, based on all the copy number and MR and the protein? It's, I mean, it's an interesting question, but it's not that uh, easy. I mean, if you want to do it by yourself, you first have to download the data from the TCGA, and then you have to learn R to uh, do the uh, survival analysis, and then you ha So basically, there are a lot of things you need to do in order to achieve this. But uh, within the um, linked omics, you can do this actually in probably just uh, 20 minutes, um, of course, without the traffic, internet traffic. <laughs> Um, so um, let's just go to the website. Uh, if you just Google linked omics, uh, and then um, you should be able to find this website. If you go to the website, uh, there are two options. Uh, you can enter as a guest, um, or you can register for an account. Um, you can do any of those analysis without uh, registration. It's free. Uh, um, the registration is also free, but the beauty of uh, regi uh, getting uh, registered is that uh, you can save your result in the database. So next time when you come back, you don't have to repeat your analysis. For example, if you do analysis today, uh, you have an account, and the next time you just log in, and all your results will be saved in the system. But if you just do as guest, uh, the result will only be good for today, and the next time uh, you come back, you, do, you have to repeat everything. So it's up to you. You can either uh, register uh, now or later, or if you want to make it easier today, you can just enter as guest. So um, if you enter as guest, or if you register and uh, come here, and at the very, uh, so basically on the left, uh, it shows you, I mean, uh, if you click on the new analysis, basically it will perform a new analysis. And this shows you the multiple steps that you need to do in order to perform an analysis. And uh, uh, if you click on the analyze the results, so basically this will show you all the results you have generated so far, right? But of course, as a guest user or new user, you don't have any results. But assuming the next time, if you, have a, uh, you are a registered user, you have some results, uh, when you log in next time, you should be able to see some results here. For example, uh, this is my account, and uh, all my analyzed results are saved here. So I have a lot of analysis already performed. So I just uh, click on this, and I can retrieve the result already. So, but for you guys, you don't have results. I hope today you have learned that linked omics comprises of three modules. Module 1, link finder, which helps in comparing data from two attributes. For survival studies, the Cox model statistics can be used and it is very widely used in many publications. Module 2 consists of link compare. This helps in comparing two or more data sets from the module link finder. Module 3 consists of link interpreter which makes use of web gestalt to interpret data from the modules 1 and module 2. In the next lecture, Dr. Bing Jiang will continue the hands on session 
on use of linked omics. Thank you.